Here are four tips for teaching music production to kids and teens. This is Eric Howe. Welcome to Mix Major Teacher TV. This is a great resource for anyone that wants to empower kids with musical creativity. So if you haven't yet, subscribe and ring the notification bell because I put out new videos on this channel every two weeks on Mondays. In this video, I'll give you my four tips for teaching music production and in particular to kids and teenagers. This is great for kids grades three through 12 and it's the same process that I use at my school, Mix Major in Herndon, Virginia. Number Number one, start with pre-made audio loops. When first learning and teaching music production, it's best to start with pre-made audio loops. You might be asking, why would we use anything pre-made when the goal is to teach kids how to create their own original music? So to answer that question, I think it's helpful to look at teaching the music production process like playing with Legos. When kids start learning how to play with Legos at a young age, what size blocks do they start off with? The small ones? the medium ones, or the large ones? The answer, of course, is the large ones. They're much easier to handle, but they still give kids the satisfaction of creating while helping them build confidence and self-esteem. So what happens if you give these young children the smaller pieces first? Well, they're gonna lack the dexterity to put the pieces together, and they're likely to get frustrated and quit. In music production, pre-made audio loops are like larger size Lego blocks. Without any musical training, kids can combine drum loops with music loops and percussion loops to control energy, mood, and flow. Then they build self-confidence and self-esteem as they make music productions that sound good right away and share this with their friends and family. So the smaller Lego blocks are smaller pieces of audio. So instead of using a pre-made drum loop, students could choose their own kicks, snares, and hi-hats to make their own beats. Instead of using a pre-made music loop, students can use a virtual instrument and arrange notes to create their own chord progressions and melodies. So in music production, the Lego blocks can get even smaller. For example, instead of using a synthesizer with preset sound, Sounds, students can learn synthesis to design their own sounds. Students can record sounds and transform them into completely new ones. The possibilities are literally endless. So what happens when you start students off with the smaller size Lego blocks when you're teaching them music production? If you think about it, it depends on the age of the student and the size of the blocks, but if you're a third grader and you've never written a chord progression before, or you're not used to writing melodies or making beats or doing sound design, you're probably gonna get frustrated, lose interest, and quit. So back to Legos. What happens when the kids get older? Do they continue using larger size Lego blocks? No, they don't. In fact, good luck keeping them on the larger blocks. They will naturally gravitate towards the smaller and smaller sizes because they can create with more detail. Most kids will demand to use the smaller size Lego blocks once they're ready. With music production, it's just like Legos. Students will naturally want to create with more detail using smaller pieces. And when they're ready, good luck keeping them on using just pre-made loops. Starting students off with pre-made audio loops lets them create in a satisfying way right away. And as they gain more experience, skill, and confidence, they'll naturally progress to creating their own original music. This process engages students from the start and keeps them intrinsically motivated to learn. Tip number two, use structure. When I first started teaching music production to kids, I learned very quickly that it's best to use structure in their music production projects. You can teach kids how to layer loops inside a digital audio workstation, but if you don't give them structure to work within, then it can quickly spiral out of control into something that sounds pretty bad. For example, a student might choose five different drum loops and layer that with five different music loops, all of which are out of key, and that can run for a full 10 minutes. When their music is difficult to listen to, especially at the beginning, this is bad for student engagement. However, if you do give them structure, for example, choose one drum loop, combine that with a bass loop, one music loop, and one percussion loop, and your song can only be a minute and 30 seconds long. This gives them the best chance to have music that sounds good as soon as possible, keeping their engagement up. Tip number three, focus on composition first, technical skills second. When I talk about composition, I'm talking about creating an overall arrangement for a song that creates and controls energy, mood, and flow. Your students will learn what happens to the energy of a song when you add and remove drums, when you add and remove bass. 
Students will learn what happens to the mood of the song if they use a music loop that's written in a major key versus a minor key. Students will learn what happens to the flow of a song if they follow best practices for song structure. Along the way, students will learn the technical skills they need as they need them. And when they're ready to progress to using the smaller size Lego blocks and creating their own loops, they'll know exactly what to do with them since they've already focused on overall composition. A good music producer needs both technical skills and composition skills. This big to small approach ensures that they learn both. And the last tip, number four, encourage musical training. We should always be encouraging students to learn an instrument, and with music production in particular, the piano. I've been playing piano for 36 years, and I always tell my students, you don't need to know how to play, but if you did, you'd be able to produce music much more quickly and much more easily. You might be asking yourself, what happens when the students are ready to start writing their own melodies and chord progressions? How can they do this without any musical training? Well, the answer is, Technology. Some digital audio workstations like Ableton Live, which is what I use here, have built-in effects that can allow you to play a chord with a touch of one note. Ableton Live even has an effect that allows you to force all the notes on a MIDI keyboard to a specific scale so that it's impossible for a student to hit a wrong note. In future videos, I'll teach you how to use these features, but for now, just know it's completely possible for students to create original compositions with absolutely no music experience, as long as they know what to do with the technology. So once again, here are my four tips for teaching music production to kids and teens. Number one, use pre-made audio loops to keep the kids creatively satisfied and engaged. Number two, use structure to give the kids the best chance of creating music that sounds good as soon as possible, while also teaching composition skills. Number three, focus on composition skills first, and the kids will naturally learn the technical skills they need as needed. And last, number four, encourage musical training, and in particular on the piano, because when students have a deeper understanding of music, they'll be able to create their music much more quickly, easily, and effectively. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with anybody that you know that would like to impact children with musical creativity. Also, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this approach? Is this something that you would implement in your classrooms? And please join me in the Mix Major Teacher Connect Facebook group. This is a great community for music educators and music technology teachers to collaborate and learn from one another. My name is Eric Howe. This is Mix Major Teacher TV, and I'll see you next time. Deep inside and you'll find it's right